Okay. Uh, before we left Kasi for Switzerland, uh, there were many requests for interviews, uh, which we weren't able to accommodate simply because we were so busy preparing for Switzerland. So I thought we'd uh, have one uh, with uh, uh, once we got back. So uh, here we are. So there's a lot to talk about. So I think you can uh, open the floor. Okay. Well, good afternoon, Mr. President, and welcome to our friends in broadcast media to this very special sit down with the president with our broadcast media. So today, uh, the president will be entertaining two questions from each of you, and let's get started. We have Ms. Karen Davila of ABS-CBN News. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Hi. I'm Karen, and thank you so much for doing this. So I'll be asking you two questions, but you have to forgive me that the first question will be, uh, will have a lot of context in it for agriculture. Sure. Uh, losses are driving farmers to desperation. Yeah. Some farmers already taking their own lives. Mm -hmm. In Davos, you said you would only step down as Agri-Secretary if you've ticked off items in your bucket list. Mm -hmm. My question is, what is in that list? And what will you specifically do to implement for farmers to feel a change? in their lives today, in the short and medium term? As a matter of fact, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because it's, uh, we always have been talking about production, production, non-importation, etc. And I, we have to always remind ourselves that you know what we are really talking about is the livelihood of the farmers as well. Not only the, uh, the supply of food, but of the, uh, of the pricing of food, but also the livelihood of farmers and the future of farmers. I mean, I think it's a much quoted, uh, a much quoted statistic that in the Philippines, the average farmer is 57, 58 years old, and the uh, young people are not that interested to enter into farming. So there are all of these multifaceted problems that are being that we face in terms in terms of agriculture. So again, in the short term, uh, the um, increasing prices of food products is alarming, and that's why we have to we now have to whatever we do, we cannot uh, we must import. Uh, I think uh, my, my, my sentiments about importation are clear, but it is an emergency situation that has been brought about by, by neglect of the agricultural sector for many, many years. And therefore, our production is well below our demand. Therefore, we must import. So, um, because of the chaos that we saw well, with the, within question when it came to sugar, when it came to uh, the onions, uh, we did not know how much of, how much of the commodity was actually in the, in the country. We're starting to get a handle on it now. And so we are going to put, uh, the, the, in, in terms of sugar, I mentioned specifically before, that we will now, from now on, maintain a two-month buffer stock. That is to uh, um, mitigate the, uh, the speculation Alam mo, normal yan eh, sa negosyante. Pag alam nila magkaka-shortage, eh, they will keep it hanggang itong asim presyo. Uh, maybe you can call that hoarding, but it's a business practice. That, and that's what we hope to avoid. In terms of onions naman, ganun pa rin ang sitwasyon. We are um, uh, not producing as much as we uh, consume. And therefore, we still have to import. But the schedule of importation, both of sugar and onion, all of the other commodities, the schedule is very, very important. It's not just a question of one lump importation at the beginning of the year. It has to come in at the proper time. So you're not competing with local farmers. So that's a, that's a very simple first step. Pag, pag ma, maayos na yan, that is one box that I've been, I will say I've been able to tick. Now the... Um, so, but we come back to the problem of production. Uh, so that, again, we still have to put into place. Once I know that the value chain has, been, is, has already been put together, never mind that it is functioning yet, but we already know what needs to be done, what needs to be done in each part of that value chain, and we have the means and we have a plan, then we will have a secretary who will then take my place and will implement that plan. So those are the essential elements that I'm talking about. Uh, there's some reorganization that needs to be done in the Department of Agriculture uh, for the simple reason that we are doing different things from what they were doing, what we were doing before. And so you have to restructure the bureaucracy in, 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 uh, 
in like fashion. I wanted to ask, uh, you said you have a, a bucket list that needs to be ticked off. Would you share some? I mean, well, that's it. That's, that's, it. that's basically it. I yeah. mean, you know, within those, within those, within that subject matter, mm-hmm. hindi, hindi lang yan. I mean, there's, there's, there, if you go into detail, mm-hmm. there are very, still very many things that we can do, we need to do. Uh, in terms of production, we have to help the farmers. We have to enter, we are, we are mm-hmm. trying to adopt new techniques uh, for, for the, uh, for farming that, so that will actually, that we will be able to use new technology, new mm-hmm. varieties, start with the R&D. Uh, all, all that, of, you, you know, and especially in, in the area of agriculture, the overarching uh, issue is climate change. Uh, the, we have a real, we're having a very tough time uh, doing the, scheduling these things because the, the weather keeps changing. Uh, and that one of the re- reasons I've, I've uh, also made contact with several other countries and my, my, my uh, counterparts in several countries is that we are trying to develop what we refer to as non-traditional supply supply uh, suppliers uh, and because of the price of fertilizer uh, the lack of uh, 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 export of wheat uh, rice of course is a, another thing that we import corn we were going to have to import but with the shocks that have hit the global economy and with the supply chain problems that we see everywhere then that is the, that is the, uh, that is something that we have to work around and the way to do it is to have many sources of supply so that whatever happens, uh, we have somewhere to go. Hopefully down the road, uh, in a few years, we no longer have to worry about non-traditional supply uh, because we will be able to produce enough for ourselves. Mr. President, about the Maharlika Wealth Fund, mm. um, Congressman Joey Salceda talked about a re-engineered fund. Mm. And I wanted to ask you, uh, it's, he said he described it as the securitization of 44 billion pesos, mm. and um, it will be listed in the stock market. Mm. Uh, you have lawmakers, opposition lawmakers, who say that under the law, mm. 50% of the income of GOCCs have to be remitted to the National Treasury, and you use it for the budget. So and- along with that, how could you ensure that the fund won't be used for money laundering given you will be okay. accepting private funding. Let's do two in one there. Yes. Um, we'll do the first one first. First of all, the idea of using the GOCCs to put value into the Marlika Fund was broached in, in Davos. And it was brought up. I don't know why it's made its news here immediately to the, to the Philippines. Uh, and uh, people are very concerned about it. I watched your interview with uh, uh, Congressman Ed Selegman this morning. Yeah. And I have heard the comments that uh, Congressman Joey Salceda has, uh, has made and his concerns that he, that, he, that he had aired. I agree with that. You cannot use funds for G- of the GOCC. Pero ng gobyerno, what will the government spend? It was a proposal. It's not something that we have adopted. Uh, the GOCC, uh, there, there are several problems because I remember one, we, we, had a, we had a little meeting, lasted about 15 minutes, and, uh, and that was proposed. Um, but after the meeting, I pulled uh, Senator, uh, Secretary Ben Jokno aside and we said, Dindi, what do you think? And I said, it's too disruptive. Think, every single GOCC has its own charter. How will you, you will then revise all of those charters uh, to align with the Maharlika Fund? Uh, that, and that's not the purpose of the GOCC, number one. Number two, what, this is a lot of income that goes to the national government that will suddenly, that will suddenly uh, uh, disappear. So that will be, not, no, sorry, it will not disappear. It will go into the Maharlika Fund and cannot be used to, for the budget of the national government. And we have many things that we would like to that we would like to appropriate uh, in the coming years, and we will need those funds. So, I don't think that that's a, that's a viable proposition, at least not for us. I've seen uh, I I know that there are other sovereign wealth funds that did it that way, uh, but it's parang hindi bagay sa atin yun. Kaya we are a little lukewarm about that uh, idea. The worry about 
uh, be the fund being used as a, a money laundering device implies that private monies will be put into the fund. But yes, private monies will be involved with the fund. But it's not a it's not a it's not a it's not a uh, savings account that you just put it there and it stays there. No, what will happen is the Maharlika fund will serve as the seed fund for the so for uh, for the sovereign wealth fund, and that that the fourth sorry the forty billion to thirty billion forty billion whatever it may come to at that point is going is going to serve as a seed money for the fund. Now, whenever we come into partnership, we do a G2G with Japan, for example, or we do a, a PPP with some big uh, outfit, then that is only the time that the monies come into the fund to be used for the program. Hindi yun basta, basta o oh, sige, bigyan niyo ako ng ilang billion dollar, tapos lalagay lang yun, ako, basta akong bahala na dyan. It's not like that at all. And in fact, even on our end, we will only deploy funds when there is a very specific project to be paid for. So money laundering just won't come into it. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Karen Davila Thank of ABS-CBN. Next, we have Ms. Cheryl Cosim of TV5. Good afternoon, Mr. President. I'm Cheryl Cosim representing TV5. And sama ko na rin po yung 1PH and 1 News. So, ibig sabihin ba nun, six questions pwede? I'm <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> Galing negotiate. <laughs> okay, my first question concerns the positions in your administration. First, just a little over a month ago, you granted former PMS chief Naida Ang Ping's leave after she asked for personal time for herself and her family. What made you appoint her as ambassador to France, considering she never held any diplomatic post before this? And who will replace her? Well, uh, I need to use this. Very Sir, good. Since, okay, uh, okay. Well, the situation with, with Secretary, then Secretary Naida, Ang Pin was that it was a personal decision on her part. Uh, she had some personal issues that she had to work through. And she said, I cannot do my work um, while I'm having to go through this. And that's why I need to, I need to um, go and think about it. And she came back and she said, maybe I can just uh, find a, a, um, uh, something that, will not, uh, uh, that, that I will be able to handle. And I said, what do you think? And she said, uh, if you could appoint me to a diplomatic position. Uh, she has not held formally a diplomatic position, but she has been working with the Foreign Service for years and years and years. And she worked in, that, in the American Embassy, uh, the Philippine Embassy in the United States. She worked in... Uh, uh, she worked in, well, China. She worked in all of the areas that, uh, uh, that we were slowly opening up. So, sanay siya sa trabaho yan. And, uh, and she has uh, said that she, and she has already, she had for years now been working on her foreign service uh, classific uh, exam. So, I think that's what she's going to plan to do now. Yun talaga ang gusto niyang gawin since before. So mm -hmm. now we'll formalize her wishes. Mm -hmm. So, but but again, the, the, the reasons for it are, are personal. So, I don't think it's my place to uh, to to talk about that. It is her choice. Okay, like what I've said, possessions in your administration. Mm -hmm. Isa pa lang, sir. Pero eto na kasi pahabol don sa first. Okay, about Irwin Tulfo. Um, it was reported that you're gonna appoint him as one of your presidential advisors if so on what no that's not been that's really not been part of the plan for erwin mm -hmm. uh, uh no he, he we, we had other plans for him mm -hmm. uh not not as a presidential advisor but he would still be part of your administration i hope so i hope so you you because whatever we say uh, difficulties that he faced with the uh, uh commit the committee on appointments and the ca uh, he, the time that he was running the DSWD, he did a very good job. So we can't lose that kind of, uh, that kind of asset. So we'll find something that he can do so we can take advantage of his, uh, of his uh, good instincts when it comes to social service. Mr. President, still position, another position in your <laughs> administration. Um, may mga um, comments po ang mga senador 
na, na mag-appoint na po kayo ng uh, uh, no. secretary po sa DA and other groups para yeah. daw po mas matutukan ang ahensya. Mm. Your comment on that? If, if for, for me, there, there really are things that I can do that if there was a secretary and he do it, he or she did it, hindi, eh, magagawa pero matagal, madaming diskusyon and they'll have to come up. Eh. Well, the president, they cannot say no to. Mm -hmm. And pag hindi nila ginawa yung utos ko, pwede kong sitahin. Mm -hmm. Yung secretary, they can, pwede, alam mo na, you know, how they, 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 it, can, it can still be, uh, may pakiusap pa. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so that's, 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 what, that's what I bring to the position is that when I make a decision, I say, this is what we need to do, this is the plan, every one of you follow this plan. You do this, you do that, magtatasking tayo, kailangan masunod yun. Mm -hmm. And if not, then I have, uh, I, I can, I can uh, uh, um, chastise them, I can uh, move them aside, push them into other positions, etc., etc., etc. But generally speaking, if the president asks you to do something, they'll do it. If the, somebody else will do it, they may do it. They probably do it, but they may not. So we, don't, we want to take that wiggle room out of, their, out of that system. Okay. And this is my second question, Mr. President. Question. <laughs> Just a few weeks after your visit to China, a Chinese Coast Guard drove away Filipino fishing boats in Ayungin Shoal. What message does this give you? And what happened to President Xi Jinping's promise for a compromise? Well, we haven't come to that compromise yet. Mm -hmm. um, and if uh, the, the timing of the, what we call, we refer to as a shadowing, is what they do is they shadow our fishing boats. And uh, so that, that incident happened right after. Uh, I had returned from China. So we have immediately used with that thing, uh, that, that mechanism that I talked about. Uh, we can even immediately contact the, mm -hmm. the Chinese government and hopefully though our counterparts on the other side can bring the two presidencies attention this problem. And we have done that. But we does not, that does not preclude us from continuing to make protests and continuing to send note verbals uh, concerning this. But, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is a long process because it is something new. Mm -hmm. I just hope we can, we can come to some kind of arrangement because uh, I cannot see uh, the utility for the Chinese of doing that. Uh, these fishing boats are not armed, They're not, uh, they don't pose a threat to anyone. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that is something that we can achieve in the near, uh, in the near term. Thank you, Mr. Right. President. Thank you, Cheryl Cosm of TV5. Next, we have Nelson Lubao of Net25. Magandang hapon po. Good afternoon. Mr. President. Good afternoon. Nice to meet you in person po. Ang aking pong katanungan ay marahil ay katanungan din ng mga simpleng mamamayan uh, tungkol sa inyong foreign travels. Ang una po ay yung binanggit nyo na ang Pilipinas ay naging bahagi na ng tinatawag na BIP, club. Uh, best performing uh, economies in Asia. Paano po natin ire-reconcile yan dun sa iniisip naman ng karaniwang tao na pagpunta niya sa palengke, mahalang sibuyas, mahalang iba't iba pang presyo ng bilihin, tapos tayo ay best performing economies, uh, Mr. President. Dahil yung inflation ang pinag-uusapan. Uh, isang aspeto lang yan sa ekonomiya. Kaya yun talaga, talaga problema, totoong to, 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 problema yan. Uh -huh. Dahil uh, um, bumababa na ng konti dahil nagla maglalabas na tayo, naglabas na, nag nagpapasok na tayo ng, ng sibuyas, nagpapasok na tayo ng asukal. So kahit pa paano, the supply will, uh, will, will uh, uh, feed the demand at magbababa ang presyo. Uh -huh. uh, kaya tayo, yun, yun ang uh, uh, para, para sa akin ay the reason na tinitignan ang Pilipinas na magandang performance dahil sa ibang bagay. Okay. Kasi maghanap, hanap mo sa, maghanap ka ng bansa na 7.1% ang growth rate. Uh -huh. Na bumaba ng 4.2% ang unemployment rate. Na mas mababa ngayon kaysa sa bago ng pandemya. Ibig sabihin nakapag-create tayo ng halos 2 million jobs uh, mula noong 2020 hanggang uh -huh. ngayon. At uh, yung pati, pati yung peso medyo tumibay na. 
Kaya palagay ko, yun, hindi lang ang inflation. Kasi lahat naman ng ibang bansa, ganyan din ang inflation. Eh. Kaya eh, tignan kung titignan ninyo, ay sasabihin, ito yung mga ibang bagay na uh, ma, kaya kahit matibay. Kaya na, nabuo, gumawa. Kasi wala namang, wala namang VIP noon eh. Uh -huh. Nangyari lang yan dahil nagpe-present tayo doon sa Davos uh -huh. at marami tayong pinakita, marami tayong paliwanag, marami tayong diskusyon sa kanila. Sabi na kasama, kasama na kayo doon sa grupong yun, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Philippines. So sa Asia, yun ang tatlo na uunahin nilang tignan as uh, investment destinations. Pero ito pong uh, performance natin sa si ekonomiya ay siguro in the following months or days, mararamdaman din ng karaniwang mga mga. Oh, siyempre. Hindi naman kasi basta magpasok ako ng uh, ilang tonelada ng uh, sibuyas, bukas oh, bababa na yung preso. It oh. has to go, dadaan pa sa sistema yan. It takes a little while. Pero hindi naman ganun katagal. This year talaga, yun ang... Yun ang yan, yan, ang, yan ang problema kung hindi, hindi ako, na hindi nagpapatulog sa akin, eh, yung inflation. Eh. That's, what I, that's what I lose sleep every night over is how to bring down inflation. So I'm determined to make, to bring down, uh, to make sure that the inflation starts to come down uh, in the first quarter and mag-normalize na pagkatapos nun. Okay. Uh, second question ko po, uh, foreign travels din, ang puna naman ng iba, bakit ba ang Pangulo ay travel ng travel? Ang dami namang problema sa bansa. Uh, ano ba ang, sa tingin po ninyo, mahal na Pangulo, yung um, travel ninyo na talagang merong uh, immediate effect sa mga Pilipino? Ay, hindi. Proseso yan. Matagal. Proseso yan. Hindi, hindi yan yung pupunta ka, tapos kakausapin, kakausapin mo yung ano, korporasyon, nagustuhan, ng, nagustuhan ka, ah. oh, ito, ito malaking pera, sige, sa'yo na. Hindi ganun. Ah. Magpapakilala muna tayo. Dahil hindi tayo, pagka hindi tayo bumiyahe at nagpakita dyan sa mga conference na yan, hindi tayo iniisip. Wala sa isip nila ang Pilipinas. Siniisip lang nila, o oh, dito tayo sa Vietnam, dyan tayo sa Indonesia, o oh, doon tayo sa China, doon tayo kung saan saan. Hindi Pilipinas ang iniisip. Kailangan natin ipakita ang ato ang ating ginagawa para naman mapaganda ang invest, potential na investment nila na dadadin nila dito sa Pilipinas. Yun ang, aking, uh, yun ang, yun ang halaga ng mga biyaheng yan. At hindi lang yun. At uh, meron din dahil sa halimbawa sa Davos ay ang, uh, ang subject matter laging pinag-uusapan ay Uh, how do we cooperate in a fragmented world? Dahil nagkaka-fragmentation nagkaka na, na rao ang buong mundo. Dahil uh, sa mga pangyayari, sa pandemya, sa Ukraine, lahat ito. Uh, paano ngayon, mag, mag, uh, paano ngayon natin ibabalik ang kooperasyon? Dahil naman, eh, isang ayon naman lahat sa pag-iisip na ang kooperasyon na sa bawat bansa ay mahalaga at hindi, hindi, hindi kakayanin ng kahit sinong gano'ng kayaman na bansa na nag-iisa. Kailangan may mga partner yan, may, kailangan may kaalyado yan. Kaya at, uh, yun naman ay pagpunta, sa, pagpunta natin sa mga ganyang conference, ay sinasab, masasabi natin, the Philippines can play this part in, that, in, in fostering or in encouraging that cooperation. May, may, may lugar tayo. We are participating in the, event, in the, in the issues and the discussion and in uh, uh, our efforts in the community of nations. Kasi kailangan din, kasama, kailangan, kasama tayo dyan. Pangatlo, I'm the new kid on the block. Nobody knows who I am. Kailangan ko magpakilala. Sino, kasi pag uh, sabi, o oh, bago ito, sino ba ito? May alam ba ito? Tama ba yung mga ginagawa? O ano ba klaseng tao yan? No, yun. Yun ang mga, it's important also na magkaroon ng personal. Halimbawa, personal sa mga leader. Na kaya, kaya ko ngayon. Hindi ko kaya gawin yun. Dati. Ngayon, kaya kong buhati ng telepono. Tumawag dyan sa lahat. Tatanggapin naman ang tawag ko. At meron na kami mapapag-usapan. And that's very, very important. Kasi yun na nga. Like in President Xi's case, siguro, eh, never pa tayo nagkaroon ng contact at that level. Ngayon, dito nga sa mga ASEAN, sa mga APEC, nakilala ko na silang lahat. Eh, mas, kahit papano, meron ka ng koneksyon. 
doon sa mga taong yan. So that's important. That's very important. Lalo na, ito nga, yung kagaya na sinasabi sa Davos, in this fragmented world. Salamat po. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nelson Lubang of Net25. On this side of the room, sir, we have June Soriao of UNTV. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon. Nice to meet you po. In relation po doon sa tanong ni Kuya Nelson, uh, sinabi niyo po sa noong Sabado sa Davos niya po na the Philippines is leading the economic recovery and performance not only in the Asia-Pacific but in the whole world. Yeah. Umani po ito ng maraming reaksyon o iba't ibang reaksyon. <laughs> Iyo ba? Saan po nakuha po yung datos para patunayan po yung pahayag na yan? Yung nabanggit ko. Napakasimple. Pagka binabati tayo, anong lagi may sinasabi sa akin pagka na may nakakausap ako? Pag yung IMF, kasi kinukongratulate tayo. Congratulations on your 7.1 growth rate. Si Widodo, ganun din. Congratulations on your 7.1 growth rate. It's the growth rate. Kasi yun talagang lahat ng bansa ng utang ng husto dito nung pandemya. Tapos nung dumating ng Ukraine, palaki ng palaki ng utang. Pasama ang Pilipinas doon. Hindi, hindi kasing lala ang sitwasyon natin sa mga ibang bansa, na karatig bansa natin. Ngunit mataas pa rin ang uh, debt to GDP ratio, kung tawagin. Kaya ang hihila lang, ang tutulong talaga sa atin na pagandahin ang debt to GDP ratio is growth. Yun lang talaga. Kaya yun ang tinitignan ng lahat. Dahil nung nagpa-pandemya nung 2020 hanggang 2022, kaduluduluhan ng 2022, ay eh, talaga ang nangyari, nag, nag, dapat pin, namatay ang economic activity. Kaya yung ma mabilis magpabuhay ulit ng economic activity, makakalamang. Eh, tayo, mabilis ang growth rate natin. Kaya at... Uh, Uh, nakikita, sinasabi na ito talaga, ngayon, kaya nga nagkaroon nga ng VIP, nasama tayo dun. Kung hindi ako napunta sa Davos, eh VI lang yan. Ngayon, <laughs> VIP na. <laughs> well, second question, in relation pa rin po dun sa, sa tanong ni Kuya Nelson, uh, kakambal na po ng uh, pangangako ng investment ng iba't ibang uh, pag, sa pagpunta ng mga dati ng presidente, nakarang presidente ng bansa, yung pangako nga po ng investment. Ano po? Yung iba po, pangako lang. Yung iba talaga, talagang hindi talaga natupad po. Katulad na lamang po nung uh, investment na ipinako ng China nung nakarang administrasyon. Sa inyo po, pa paano nyo po masasabi na matagumpay yung mga ipinangako sa inyo ng iba't ibang mga leader ng bansa pagpatungkol po sa investment? Eh, nasa sa atin yun. Nasa sa atin yun. Kaya yung mga biyahe, eh, nabang nabanggit mo na rin, uh, yung mga biyahe, medyo babawasan na namin for the rest of the year. Ang dahilan ay kailangan na nimbalikan lahat itong mga nasimulaan sa mga sa ASEAN, sa APEC, sa China, uh, pati yung pagpunta sa EU, sa Brussels, tapos ito yung itong biyahe dito sa Davos. Ay kailangan namin idetalye yung aming pinag-usapan. Sino ba dito tungkol dito? Sino bang kinausap natin? Ano bang naging usapan natin? O dito sa lahat ng project na sinasabi, ano ba i-prioritize natin diyan? Kailangan na namin gawin yun. Hindi pa namin nagagawa dahil busy kami, biyahe kami nga ng biyahe. Uh, pero at least meron kaming naiuwi. Ngayon, kailangan na natin i-consolidate, kailangan na natin i-follow up, kukulitin na natin yung mga kausap natin o yung pinag-usapan natin, ituloy na natin ang usapan. Nasa sa atin talaga yon Kung pababayaan natin yan, marami na tayong nakita. Nagpumirma ng katakot-takot ng MOU, wala naman nangyari. Kaya yung MOU para sa akin, oh, maganda yan, okay yan. Pero simula pa lang yan. Hindi, hindi pa yan project. Simula pa lang yan. Simula pa ng usapan para magkaroon ng project. Kaya marami pang gagawin. Kaya yung sinasabi ko kanina, proseso ito. Hindi ito yung basat biglang mangyayari na yun na nga, may isang biyahe, uuwi ka, dami mong dalang, dami mong dalang investment. Hindi ganun. Kailangan dahan-dahan, tatitignan, pag-uusapan. And it's also, to put, uh, ano, itong mga biyahe ganito ay kung ta, pagmamasdan ninyo yung mga meeting namin, yung tawag namin round table meeting sa mga negosyante, uh, mag, mag, magkikwento kami, sasabihin niyo, ang Pilipinas, ganitong ginagawa namin, binago namin yun, oh, meron kaming create law, maganda na mag-PPP, etc., etc. Okay. Lahat yan ay eh, pinag-uusapan. Pero ang ending lagi, sa palagay ninyo, ano pang pa kailangan namin gawin para mag-invest kayo dun sa amin? So it's interactive. 
Hindi lang, hindi lang kami nagsasalita doon, naglelekso doon. Nakikinig din kami sa kanila. Doon sa inyo, ano na bang nangyayari? May potential ba dyan? O ano ang mangyayari dyan? Ano, magbag kayong titingin dyan, dito, meron may... Ano. Ganun, ganun ang, ano, ganun ang interaction doon. Para mabigyan din tayo ng bagong kaalaman tungkol sa takbo ng ekonomiya. Halimbawa, kausa, kausap mo, eh, yung katabi ko sa Davos, si, ano, it was the, Moynihan, the head of the uh, Bank of America. O, tinatanong ko, anong outlook ng Bank of America sa mundo? Ano yung tingin ninyo? Anong areas ang mag, mag, magiging masigla? Ano yung medyo may iiwanan? So, marami kang natutunan. Anong plano ng Bank of America? Saan kayo mag invest Sampa, that's the only way the, the, kung hindi the, the, at nangyari yun, nakausap ko ang head ng WTO, na head, ng head ng IMF, uh, ang head ng World Bank. Tungkol nga dyan, ina-analyze ko. Ano ba talagang nangyayari? Ano sa palagay ninyo ang mangyayari? Saan tayo pwedeng umasa? Saan yung uh, medyo, medyo mahina ang, 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 ang pagbago? So, it's, it, it's, a, it's a whole process, but it They learn about us, but we certainly also learn about them. So that's also very important. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, June Soriao of UNTV. Next, we have Mela Les Moras of PTV4. Hi, good afternoon, Mr. Good afternoon. President. I'm Mela from uh, PTV4. Sir, follow-up lang po dun sa nabanggit nyo na, yun nga, magbabawas na kayo rin ng uh, biyahe this year. Pero saan-saan po kayo yung mga kumpirmado nyo ng pupuntahan at gano ito kahalaga para sa ating bansa? yung mga biyahe ito. The one, the only one na confirms sa ngayon, APEC, November, sa States. Pero November pa yun. Hindi, hindi, kasi ang Philippine, dapat, dapat naman talaga ang Philippine President, kailangan pumunta sa lahat ng APEC. Uh, importante talaga. At, uh, um, maraming talagang napapag-usahan. Kahit yung, kuminsan, five minutes lang, eh, mag-uusap kayo. Pero mula doon, Meron na, bigbigay na kayo ng number. Pwede mo nang tawagan, pwede mo na i-follow up. At kung minsan, ang nangyayari dyan, kaya kumpleto ang delegasyon namin. Dahil pinasabi ko, kung ano pang mangyari, kailan handa tayo, nandyan yung, nandyan yung sekretary na dapat magtrabaho. Nandyan yung staff niya para gawin na yung papeles, hindi na mag-aantay na uh, pag-uwi ng Pilipinas. Nandyan na lahat, kailangan kumpleto. Kasi, kasi itong mga biyahe ito, dalawang araw yan eh. Dalawang araw, ta mahaba na yung tatlong araw. Ang dami mong gagawin doon sa tatlong araw na yun. Kaya kailangan kompleto na kompleto ka. And that's why uh, uh, that we, we have tried to be, to be uh, very ready uh, for that. The APEC, again, is one of those that uh, I really have to, a Philippine president should really attend. Um, because it is the relationship, essentially, between ASEAN, the Philippines, and the rest of the world. And that, uh, uh, that's uh, very, th those are very, very important relationships. So, sa ngayon yun pa lang na confirm, November, APEC. Opo. Sa and, San Francisco ata. Opo, and sir, kasi uh, for my second question, about naman sa Maharlika Investment Fund ulit, uh, ngayon kasi nagbalik session na ang Kongreso, ano po yung mensahe nyo sa Senado? Kasi nasa kanila na ngayon yung bola patungkol dito sa MIF, at uh, kailan nyo po ba target itong maisabatas mismo? Ang message ko sa Senado, suriin ninyo na mabuti para magandang maganda yung batas natin. Suriin ninyo na mabuti. Siyempre, sa, sa mas maganda na matapos sa lalong madaling panahon. Pero hindi naman, hindi naman dapat imadali dahil napaka-importante lahat ng mga ilal bawat salita na ilalagay mo doon sa batas na yun. May, 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 may kabuluhan yun. Hindi mo basta't pwedeng, oh, ba, tama na yan, okay na. Kailangan talagang pag-aralan na mabuti. Eh, malaki naman ang tiwala ako sa mga senador. Alam naman nila yung kanil ng trabaho. Pag-aaralan talaga nila na mabuti yan. And that's the process. Tama yun. Tama yun. Uh, but in terms of when scheduled, nag-release ng statement si uh, Senate President na baka by Holy Week matapos na. Maganda yun. That would be good. But ang, ako sa akin... Mas importante na maging tama kaysa maging mabilis. So, kailangan gawin nating tama. Kahit na masyad, mas, lahat naman masyadong matagal eh. Pero basta't makuha, we have to get it right. We, can't, we cannot make that, that, that. Getting it wrong would be a very poor, would be a very bad mistake. Okay. 
Exactly. Maraming okay. salamat po, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Mela. And we have uh, Rico Hizon of CNN Philippines. Hello, Mr. President. Hi, Rico. Rico Hizon, CNN Philippines. Tinanong niya yata lahat ng mga tanong na gusto kong tanongin eh. <laughs> ng sure. mga fellow anchors. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure na may isip ka. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, I have been an OFW uh, for 25 years. Uh, Hong Kong, London, and, uh, and Singapore. And having worked with two global news organizations, I've been exposed to the best practices of various governments in the region and around the world. Good governance, transparency, and accountability. Um, the Filipino people really want to know, from your eight overseas trips in the last seven months, how much have you spent per trip? Indonesia, Singapore, when you went to Europe, to China, and here in Davos, and the number of people in your official and unofficial entourage list. Para lang klaro po sa ating mamamayang yeah. Pilipino. Well, I don't have the figures. I'm sure their figures are somewhere. Uh, but Pero will it eventually be revealed, Mr. President? Well, for the Filipino I think, people. I, as once we once we've calculated everything, because this last trip, of course, was just uh, we just finished la, uh, before during the weekend, and we came back on Saturday. Uh, so, on in terms of the cost, you know, the way I see it, you have to look at it as ROI. Do we bring something back or do we not? Mm. Uh, if you say I don't know, as I said, I don't know the exact figures of the cost and everything, but for example, we came back from China with pledges of twenty-two billion. Mm. Let's say we get actual out of that one billion. Boeing bawi lahat ng eight trips. Finished. That's, uh, that's, that's, the, that's the idea. And we did not only go to China. We went to Davos. Uh, we went, to, uh, we went to, to the EU. We went to uh, ASEAN. We went to I APEC. Uh, so in each of those, many pledges were signed. And as I said, it is up to us. Now, the measure of success will be you know, cost-benefit, very simple. <laughs> mm -hmm. How much effort did you put into it? It's not just the money. It's the time that you put into it. Mm -hmm. It's the time and the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the effort that, is, that, that, that goes into it is, is really, uh, that's what I was trying to explain earlier, the reason that we have everyone on the delegation. Actually, the delega official delegation is just myself and the cabinet ministers. Uh, then they have staff. So the rest are security. Uh, and the others uh, that have been accompanying me are actually private sector. They don't actually fly mm -hmm. with me. They, they, they go there on their own. Although they are, we could, we, they are included in our meetings and they have their own meetings um, on, the, on the sidelines as well. So uh, again, I, the, way, the way I approach it is ROI. Mm -hmm. How much did you spend? How much did you get? And uh, again, as I'm saying, if we get just just one of the, the MOUs, isa lang. Mm -hmm. Napakahina naman natin if isa lang ang makuha natin. Hindi, natin. hindi namin ginagawa trabaho namin kung yun lang ang makuha, isa lang makuha natin. But sabihin na lang natin, isa lang ang makuha natin. Bawi na lahat ng trip ko. Pero Mr. President, sinasabi rin ng mga kritiko that no matter how the government tries to invite invest, to the country, but if there's a lack of transparency, uh, uh, accountability, uh, the country does not really invite uh, confidence. I fully agree. So oh. we will so have transparency. So Mr. President. So there will, there will be accountability and transparency mm. in everything that we do. Uh, that's the axiomatic. You know, who's going to argue with that? Uh, the, that is one that, but it has not been an issue that uh, the private businesses bring up. They bring up ease of doing business. They bring up the cost of energy. Uh, they bring up the problems of uh, legislative guarantees. Ang legislative, lalo na sa PPPs, legislative guarantees, ibig sabihin na sa gitna ng project nila, papalitan yung batas, hindi nakikita yung project nila. Pero pilit pa rin silang tapusin. Yun, yung mga nangyayari daw. Yan ang mga sabi sila, yan ang rinireklamo nila sa Pilipinas. So the, uh, the critics will have, their, will have their say. 
But those who are actually contemplating putting good money into the Philippines mm -hmm. have other issues. That is not those accountability and transparency is not an issue. Mr. President, you talk about the ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. You talk about uh, power rates, which is one of the highest uh, in Asia. Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> no, Europe is the same now as us. But what are your plans during your administration yeah. to bring this down together with the private sector? Because is, that is one of the issues yeah. that is being raised by many investors oh, around yes. the world. Mm -hmm. no, before, medyo number two na lang ngayon. Dati number one talaga. Kasi hindi lang itong administration oh. na ito. Even oh, the past years, administrations years, have always been years. promising. Yeah. Let's improve the ease of doing business. So, the bureaucracy. No, the bureaucracy has to be streamlined. Uh, the ease of doing business is because we're talking about trade. Uh, so the digitalization is going to be a very important part of that. We have to digitalize customs. We have to digitalize all of these collecting agencies so that uh, the BIR, the, even the central bank, the payments can be made over the internet. All of those things that we don't do now. Uh, we have to remove then any the discretion. It's just like, kung, kung gawin, if, if the thing is to, lahat ng, wala, kahit wala kang kausap na, na, na tao, nagagawa mo yung kailangan mo. Kung makuha mo yung lisensya mo, makuha mo yung permit mo, makapagbayad ka nung uh, whatever it is, ng fee, whatever it is to get your papers, whatever it is. So, you, we, we came up against a very disturbing uh, uh, finding here in the Philippines. The... Ordinary Filipinos who have connectivity talk to every aspect of their lives through the internet, to the school of the children, to their business, to their friends. And the only entity that they do not talk to over the internet is the government because the government is not digitalized. So let's digitalize the government and we will go, that will take us a long way uh, to uh, helping in the ease of doing business. Now, the, the problem of energy is a, is a very major one. Uh, it's a very major one because at the bottom of it is simple. The supply of power, does, mm -hmm. uh, is, is, uh, the demand for power far exceeds the supply that we are producing. And there's also a problem in distribution, which is why the prices are so high. Uh, and that has to be fixed also. So, and, but in the, in the long term, uh, once we fix what we can at home, in the long term, and that is one of the things that we will talk about a great deal on these trips, is bringing new power plants into the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And in, uh, of course, we are stressing on renewables because we're trying to um, improve the mix of power, um, of power generation between uh, traditional and renewables. So, that is on, but that's a long that's a long term anything i start anything this government starts we will not see the end ang nuclear power plant 6 years 7 years ang floating turb ang floating wind turbine 6 years 7 years ganun din mm -hmm. anything is 6 years 7 years but we have to start so that's what we're planning to do we will start isang tanong na lang baka kasi hindi na ako makakatanong eh um, mr president ang ating utang 13.6 trillion pesos ang taas-taas and our debt to service ratio is more than 60% paano natin po ipababa ito i'm sorry that's growth we, we will pull ourselves out of debt via growth hmm. that really is the 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 the, um, the guiding principle to the economic uh, to the economic plan. And through investments and the pledges that, that the, you will be focusing on. Well, yes, make them real so yeah. that that growth continues to pull us out and then provide new jobs. Now we have to, we're, we're very proud that we're at 4.2% unemployment rate, uh, which is like, you know, you cannot have a recession if your employment rate's that low. Uh, so, but despite that, we still have to make the jobs, the, the jobs more higher quality. We have to make them better. Uh, so, the, these green jobs, which is what we're talking about, and even the, uh, the new technologies that are going to be used for our OFWs, mm -hmm. uh, all of these things, the upskilling, the uh, reskilling, that, that, that's, uh, that's, that's all we talk about. That's all, because that's, those are the things that we need to do. Uh, it's not one simple thing. There is, no, there is no silver bullet. We have to do very many things to make it right. Because what we are in fact doing is restructuring 
the entire Philippine economy to adjust to the new world global uh, economy. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks, Rico. <laughs> Thank you, Rico, for the many questions. <laughs> let's move. Okay, let's move on to Sas Rogando Sasot of SMNI. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Sas of SMNI News Channel. My first question is related to privatization. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier this month, Department of Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista revealed that you have plans to privatize the operations of. Uh, Naia, and as we all know, privatiz privatizing government assets has been a very contentious issue in our country. For example, the predecessor of your father, former President Corazon Aquino, you know, has been lambasted for privatizing a lot of uh, government assets. We, we have no plans to privatize anything. Okay. There's no plan to privatize anything. Uh, we. Uh, rather, we do the opposite. No, when, when uh, Secretary J.B. Bautista was talking about that, um, I think he may have been, maybe he misspoke or he was misinterpreted, but uh, it's, you cannot privatize an airport to begin with. And they, they, they cannot own the airport. No, they, no, a, private, a private firm cannot own the airport. At best, kasi nga nagkakagulo, nagkakaproblema tayo dito sa airport, at again, in New York, meron kaming nakilala, the group that runs Gatwick Airport, they run London Airport, they run uh, several big airports, that we're talk, ask, asking them, what can they do? Can they come in and help us so that we can increase the traffic through uh, the Manila Airport? And they said they could. And so they are coming, they, they, are, they were here last week and to look at the operations of, uh, of the airport and especially since we had that problem in New Year's Day and this recent uh, outage with the UPS. Uh, then the, that, so at most, we will have a management contract. Come in and manage, okay. come in and manage the airport. Uh, and they say that they, without changing anything, without, without changing, uh, without new equipment, without building a new runway, that they can increase the uh, traffic from what is presently they refer to as 35 movements per hour to up to 45 movements per hour without changing anything. So we want that. And those, those skills can only be had from this group. And Well, no, there are several groups, but they can be had from the private sector group who have huge experience in, in running ports and running airports. Mr. President, my second question is about foreign policy. You have been very clear and empathic since the start of your administration that you're going to continue the foreign policy doctrine of your predecessor, the friend to all, enemy to none, foreign policy doctrine of non-alignment. Uh, my question is related to how further you're going to possibly refine or operationalize this doctrine. Um, does your administration see any opportunity in for example, deepening engagement with the non-aligned movement, especially now that superpower rivalry, especially in our zone, is you know might be intensifying um, sometime in the future. Well, th that was very much in response to the Cold War and the, the slow, uh, the slow dismantling of the, uh, the mm, organs of the Cold War. If that's what you want, if that's how you want to put it, uh, and that is why the that, that non-aligned treaty was created uh, between several nations who said that we no longer, we no longer subscribe to the notion that we as a country must choose one to side with one uh, superpower or another. And that is precisely what we have undertaken. And that is exactly the, uh, the position that uh, uh, I have, that I have uh, taken in terms of foreign policy. Uh, although, you know, I, it came up, this came up again in our discussions in the conference, is uh, the question that was asked was uh, very, very actually thought-provoking. Uh, will, will geopolitics finally kill globalization? Because geopolitics is pulling people apart and all these aggregations are being pulled apart. And uh, the general conclusion is that, that the people, that countries realize that uh, alliances are important, are in fact, they're more than important, they're necessary. 
Nonetheless, these, are, these alliances do not mean that we are, uh, again, in, within the sphere of influence of any great power. As a matter of fact, uh, in ASEAN, we all came to the agreement that at the very least, in ASEAN, in the Asia Pacific region, the future of the region must be decided by those in the region, not by some outside power. And so I think the idea, I do not know of the formal, the, I, I do not know of any formal uh, meetings or conferences of the non-aligned nations. They used to have them, they don't have them very much anymore. Uh, I don't know about that, but very, we are very much in the spirit of that treaty. We are very much part of it in the sense that we continue to uh, walk that very fine line between two great superpowers who are uh, surrounding us both physically and geopolitically. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you so much, SAS of SAS Raganda Sansot of SMNI. And last but not least, we have Ivan Mayrina of GMA7. Mr. President, good afternoon. I'm good Ivan Mayrina. I represent GMA Integrated News. Before Hello, I Mayrina. proceed to my two questions, I'd like to ask a follow-up question <laughs> from, from uh, Cheryl's question uh, earlier about the latest incident in Ayungin Shoal. Uh, Mr. President, how do you intend to resolve the seeming disconnect between what gets agreed upon at your level, at the top level, and what gets implemented out at sea. Yeah. I know you said there is no compromise yet, but in the meantime, our fishermen are being prevented from engaging in their livelihood. Well, I think the actions that, uh, that, are, that are needed are really from the Chinese side. Uh, and that is because we, we, we do not send fish, uh, uh, Coast Guard boats into what we consider their waters or international waters. They stay within Philippine waters. And so that uh, hopefully, as I said, the reason that it was important for me, uh, let, let me clarify what we talked about with, the, with President Xi. And it was very simple. I said we have to raise the level of discourse between the Philippines and China. Now, we already have a bilateral group that's working on issues about the, the South China Sea. Now, my proposal is that we, inc we, ha we bring that bilateral group to a higher level. It's a sub-ministerial level now. So well, let's bring it to a ministerial level. And I will ask my foreign secretary to be part of it. I will ask my ambassador to China to be part of it. And I guarantee you that if there is any decision that needs to be made, Either of those gentlemen can pick up the telephone and talk to me. And within five minutes, we will have a decision. I hope that China can do the same. And that is what, that is what the, uh, the presidency was agreeable. And he said, why not? So he assigned his foreign minister uh, to, uh, to take care of the details. That's what we're working on now. Now, uh, with the power structure in, 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 in uh, the People's Republic, uh, I think that if uh, the president, President Xi, uh, puts out an order that we will, we will not do that anymore, we will do something else, then I think it will be, I think the, it, I think the chain of command is fairly solid. That, uh, uh, because again, we will, have the, we will be able to report any violations of whatever agreement we come to. Pagalawa, uh, unang tanong ko pala. <laughs> Kamakailan po naglabas ng video si First Lady Lisa? Tungkol sa, naglabas siya ng warning sa mga taong gumagamit daw ng kanyang pangalan para ma-appoint. Apparently, it had something to do with appointments at the AFP. At sinabi niya, pag ginawa niyo yan, sasabihin ko sa asawa ko, huwag kayong i-appoint. My question, Mr. President, is how involved is the First Lady in your decisions with regard to appointments and in your governance in general? Zero. Uh, she really has no, she really has no input on that. The, the, my, the first lady helps me in terms of re, the organization because she's actually very, very good at that. Organizing which uh, office, how the office, how the workflow goes, where the documents go through. She's, well, she's a well-trained lawyer, so she's very good at that. And uh, so, but that's, that's the extent of it. We don't talk about uh, we don't talk policy together. I mean, she'll, she'll comment. She generally say that, you know, uh, that looks good, that doesn't look good. I don't know why you're doing that. Uh, that's fine. That's what a great idea. But that's it. 
Uh, do you consult her in difficult decisions? Not political. <laughs> Not political decision. Legal. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, legal, I will ask her. I will ask, I will ask whenever there's a legal question. I'm not a lawyer, so I need an expert uh, opinion. She's right next to me most of the time, so I can turn to her. I can turn to, I am very lucky, actually. I, I, I think I have the best legal representation of uh, any president. I have a former chief justice as my uh, executive secretary. I have uh, JPE, who is uh, working as a legal advisor to the president. And between, uh, between all of these experts and luminary, legal luminaries, uh, that's, when, that's the only time that, uh, uh, that, that the discussion inc may include Lisa. But she's not, she doesn't come to the office and sit with us at all. Mm -hmm. If I have something to ask, it's usually definitions. Mm -hmm. Define to me what is, the legal, what is the legal definition of this? What is the legal definition of that? When they talk about this, what, they, what do they mean? What's the legal concept behind that? It's usually, that's the kind of question, because she's a teacher. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of question I ask her. Last question, sir. Okay. <laughs> Madalas rin pong isama si Congressman Sandro sa inyong mga biyahe mm -hmm. at sa inyong mga engagements. The question is, is the Congressman being groomed as the next Marcos president? Sandro? <laughs> uh, no. He's not being, it's, we're not grooming him for anything. He's grooming himself. He's a, He's a, he's a, uh, he has decided on this, uh, on, on this uh, career and politics, and uh, I, I, he will handle it the way he does. Where there's, not, there's not some long-range plan that one day Sandro is going to be president. Um, he will laugh, actually he'll laugh in your face if you tell him that. But no, there's no, we, we, <sighs> We don't, we don't think in those terms. He, he's, he has worked in, he has work in, uh, in, uh, the, in Ilocos Norte. Uh, even talks of the talk of the presidency would be so, so, so premature. Uh, and it's not something that we plan. I mean, we, we'll see. I think he has the same attitude as I do. I'll take this as far. I'll do as well as I can, work as hard as I can, and take this as far as I can. Which is exactly what the, they said, you know. Well, like, they, when 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 people talk about, the, did you did you plan this being to, to be president? I said, well, you know, I was a congressman. I said, well, masarap din siguro magpresidente, no? Well, governor ba? All these problems na hinaharap ko, maayos ko sa ano ito kung presidente na ako. Senador ganon din, di ba? Everybody dreams to be the the number one position, but uh, that doesn't mean that. Uh, uh, we're plotting, uh, <laughs> you know, we have this long-range plan, not at all, not at all. He's, uh, he has, he's too busy anyway, he has too much work anyway. Um, the reason he accompanies us is because he's an author of the Maharlika Bill, the Maharlika Fund Bill. And we, he, sometimes he has, like, uh, I, have, uh, I had an interview with Financial Times, uh, he took over when it came to the Maharlika bill because I had somewhere else to go. So Shang nag explain. Uh, author naman siya, dapat alam niya. So that's one, that, these recent trips, uh, that has been, that's the reason why he has been with us. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Well, on that note, thank you so much, Mr. President. <laughs> thank you so much. One round lang. No round. <laughs> round two. <laughs> But uh, let's wrap it up. Yeah, thank you so much to our friends in media, our anchors in broadcast media for being here in our sit down with Mr. President. And uh, yeah, I hope you liked it.